Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And you know, we're really getting close to the finish line. Today we're going to talk about self-imposed exile. And we're going to be using 1 Kings, verse 19, 1 to 18. And I'm not going to read it all. But the basic gist is God encourages his discouraged prophet Elijah. I'm like Elijah. I sometimes struggle with discouragement. I wince as I scan headline news that glorifies sin and blatantly ridicules morality. I blush on behalf of the Western world that appears to have no shame at times. I weep as I watch dear friends and family members struggle with addictions and mental illnesses and the consequences of poor life choices. When will they ever find freedom? When will those who don't know the Lord turn to the Lord? Now, when I wrote this four years ago, I wrote this, where are the Billy Grahams of our age who will boldly speak against sin and who have the ear of our world's leaders? They're out there. I'll fill you in at the end of this. God answers me today in the same way he answered his disheartened prophet long ago. He asks me to quiet my heart so I can hear his still, small voice. Elijah was a man of action, and he was comfortable when there were great miracles that took place that gave little doubt that Yahweh was the one true God. In 1 Kings 18, there's a good example of that. Elijah called out for God to display his might, and boy, did God do so. Uh, that is a chapter when he destroyed the prophets of Baal who were into human sacrifice. I can only imagine the adrenaline rush that went through Elijah that day, but it was not enough to keep that man of God in a place of trust and of hope. I wrote this again four years ago. I've since learned that what I wrote just now isn't quite true. Shortly after the victory on Mount Carmel, Elijah fell into a deep despondency. Now, according to biblical scholars, there were probably at least three to five years between that point. But where we find Elijah right now is where Elijah is completely depleted emotionally and he is in despair. So in 1 Kings chapter 19, Yahweh drew so close to Elijah that he could whisper in his prophet's ear. He then called Elijah out of his self-imposed exile and back into the community by leading him to other servants in whom God had placed his trust. He reassured Elijah that he was not alone in the battle no matter what Elijah was complaining about and no matter the self-pity that had crept into Elijah's life at that point. Much like Elijah, when I am discouraged, I tend to want to withdraw from the world and all its disappointments. In the same way God ministered to Elijah, God ministers to me. He first calls me to intimacy with him, and from that place, he calls me out of my exile by drawing my attention to his faithful ones, people like Linda. Linda was bedridden and in constant pain from advanced Lyme's disease, and yet she remained faithful to the end with her global prayer ministry are people like John. John drives miles out of his way every Sunday back and forth to pick up the elderly to make sure they make it to church. God then reminds me of dear brothers and sisters in Christ who prayed faithfully for me over decades, pouring out their wisdom, counsel, and love into me. Yes, there are times when God draws us into the wilderness, but he does so for a purpose. 
and never with the intention that we make our permanent camp there. Perhaps you've chosen to live in the desert place because of disillusionment within the body of Christ or by discouragement that life isn't going the way that you think that it should, or perhaps depression. God invites you to enter into a place of quietness so you can hear his voice. Perhaps that voice will invite you out of the wilderness and back into an encouraging fellowship. Now, about the Billy Grahams out there, I have heard that there are several men and women of God who are being invited to consult with world leaders where they go in, where they share God's wisdom, where because they have got God's ears there, they've got a pretty good idea of what's going on in the world. And they're invited into places that famous names would never be invited into because those world leaders do not want the press to know that they are seeking counsel from directions that our modern day press would not like very much. So keep those men and women of God in prayer as they go about in God's secret service. That's it for today. Remember not to allow yourself to fall into self-pity and not to fall into the lie that you're the only one out there doing the things of God because you're not and God wants to lift you out of that mindset.